Hey everyone, welcome back to the Summer Pie series and in this video we're going to build the ResNet that we were talking about in the last video where we were talking about deep residual learning. ResNet will enable us to create very deep neural network models and it also relieves the idea of having to predict or guess how many layers will be sufficient to train our model. We can just create a very deep neural network module and the residual learning idea will prevent any degradation problems that would have came up before. So as you could see here, I have like the layout already. We already know that we need to start off with the class, with the torch and then module, then the initialization uh, method, the super function with the correct naming convention. So here I have a setup for a residual block and the ResNet itself. So the design philosophy that we'll be using to build our neural networks from now on is a little different and I think it's more suitable for more advanced applications of deep learning. So I think it's good to go over and get used to how it works. Okay, so as you could see here, I have a figure of the residual block shown in the paper by he et al from Microsoft Research going over residual learning. So what we have to do is make this block before we make the full ResNet configuration. Okay, so let's start off. Um, I think I'll just call it convolutional block. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to mimic this process here where we have a convolutional layer, we'll apply a batch normalization and the ReLU activation, do another convolution with batch normalization before we add everything. So to do that, we'll say, we'll create a sequential block where it follows that process. So first we have the convolutional layer, so conv2d, and we'll have a number of feature maps that we could define later. And remember how to maintain dimensionality. Remember at some point your neural network will be deep and you're downsizing the dimensions. And at some point you just wanna maintain the dimensions so you can make it deeper. So we'll just use a kernel size of three with a padding one and a stride one. This will allow us to keep the dimensions of the feature maps and we'll have no problem adding as many layers as we want. And of course we need to normalize our layers. So batch norm 2D, normalizing a number of feature maps. And then we'll apply the relu function as usual. Again, we'll apply another convolutional layer as we could see here. We'll follow the same exact uh, parameters as the last one. And then we'll apply batch normalization. So now what we need to do is create this skip connection and it's very simple. All we need to do is say result equals X. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna pass our inputs forward and we're going to add the results after applying a convolution to the inputs as well. So conv block X. Remember in the last video, we talked about how in residual learning, we pass in the old inputs as residual information and then we add any additional features that the network might learn. Now what we need to do is apply a relu function. So we'll say self.relu on the result, but we need to create this function so that we can access it. So we'll say self.relu equals nn.relu. And that should be it for creating a residual block. So this is just one part of the residual learning. Now we need to create the full network. So if you refer to the paper, you'll see a figure which shows the 34 layer residual network. And it looks kind of crazy, but it's going to be really simple to implement. And our ResNet won't exactly be the same thing that we see here. We're going to apply it a little differently since we're just using it for a very simple case. We just want to test something and we're going to use it inside our GAN. So all we need to do is we'll start our ResNet block and then we'll say for every input in range number of layers. So here we have number of feature maps, of course we'll need that. And then we have the number of layers we want to add. 
So here we have 34 layers, but you could define that later on when you actually instantiate your networks. So what we'll do now is just say for every layer that we want to add, we'll add a residual block to our ResNet. So we just say plus equal residual block number of feature maps. And what happens is if you have if you input 34 layers, you're going to add 34 residual blocks. So it's pretty simple. We'll say ResNet equals and then we want to put it in a sequential method. And to do that, we just unpack it as follows. And that's our ResNet. All we need to do now is say self.ResNet, apply that to our inputs. So now we've created this residual network. It was pretty simple to create. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this the base of our next generator, which will be based on the autoencoder or UNet architecture. And once we complete that, we'll be ready to go to see what happens when we apply our updated GAN on that ball simulation. Hopefully it'll, it'll be able to predict the correct dynamics. I haven't tried it yet, but the result should be interesting whether or not it fails or succeeds. So I hope to see you in the next couple of videos. Peace.